chapter three, Hoggle's Longing. Sat low, the daughters of the dairymen crouched beneath the cows and pulled the milk from their udders as they had every day since they were first able. It was more regimen than routine, the mechanical sound of each rhythmic tug and the subsequent tinny splash accompanied by the incessant groans from the beasts themselves was the music of home, its dull cadences almost soothing. But for Huddle, the sound was also accompanied by a stillness, a feeling of unbearable emptiness that had been growing there for as long as she could recall. It was a longing as insidious as the odor from the stables. The feeling would grab a hold of her consciousness before she was permitted to continue on. She felt void of more than just her energy. It was a collapsing of life purpose, as if the oil had run out, extinguishing her flame. Parla, what is it? Hoddle did not even notice Hava's concerned hand upon her shoulder. Nothing. Hoddle dismissed the feeling, brushing it away. Nothing at all. But of course it was something. And she wanted it gone. To feel once more, even in the briefest of moments, the fellowship of her community, her faith, and above all, her affinity with her family. She longed to grow inward, outward, taller still. She longed to burst through the barn doors and run toward any kind of rescue across vast distances through the mists of the morning until the collapse of her body matched that of her spirit. All of a sudden, she was quite nauseous with it. Huddle shook herself, threw back her head, and smiled with reassurance at her sister before returning to the others with a forced resolve. That was the summer she turned 16, the summer before she met Perchik. <laughs>